In this video, I'm going to show you how sugar feeds cancer. So most people uh, who don't have a background in science, you're not going to follow. That's not how you want to do this. There. Do it again. In this video, I'm going to show you how sugar feeds cancer. So to understand this, how this works, there's a couple of topics you need to understand. So first, you're going to need to know what apoptosis is, and you're going to need to know what mitochondria are. And if you know what these are, then you'll appreciate why it is or how it is that sugar can feed cancer. So what is apoptosis? Well, apoptosis is known as programmed cell death. So cells have these little organelles called mitochondria that participate in creating a pore that then kills the cell that it lives in. Yeah, and this goes on every day, billions and billions of cells. How many cells? Here you go. How many billions is 10 to the 11th? It is 100 billion cells, normal adult humans, 100 uh, billion cells die each day and are replaced with new cells. Now, not all these cells are obviously cancerous, but those that are, thank goodness, we, we eliminate it by apop apoptosis. So it is the mitochondria inside the cells that, that play a huge role in driving apoptosis. So program cell death. So we want our mitochondria to be healthy so they can kill the cell that they live in before the cell becomes cancerous. So we know if you eat sugar, we start to repress this normal healthy function. So let me show you about that paper. It's very scary. So four weeks of adding sugar-sweetened beverages to, a, to the diet of healthy, lightly active individuals. So how much did they add? 140 grams plus or minus per day, which is about 560 calories if they were at the 140 grams. So that's 560 calories of sugar-sweetened beverage on top of their normal diet. Remember, we need mitochondria to, to drive apoptosis, to protect cells before they become cancerous. Look what happens. That amount of overeating sugar reduces mitochondrial activity. What a total nightmare. So normal cell. Normal cell, you can see now, by the way, this is a mitochondria, and it's enormous for pictorial sake. Pictorial sick, whatever, you get it. This is how big a, little, a mitochondria might otherwise be. Very small. But this cell, this little, this little organelle, as they're called, called the mitochondria, they are the ones responsible for making the energy that we need to live uh, that we get from fats and ketones and from glucose. So mitochondria, so if you take in glucose normally, you know, it's in, it's in, it's in your system after you eat carbohydrate or, or whatever, so, so glucose enters a normal cell, we'll call it normal muscle cell, enters a cell, and you're going to make some energy in this pathway. And you're going to make some lactic acid. But a lot of the pyruvate is going to ultimately enter into the mitochondria where you can make a whole lot more energy. So when you overeat sugar, the way I described previously, this pathway is augmented and this mitochondria, its activity is depressed. So in the normal person who overeats sugar, you are compromising your cells from effectively utilizing fats and ketones for energy because of the excess consumption of sugar and fat, sugar and flour in the average American's diet. And I should realize that the average American, so let me just go to another picture here. By the way, all these images that you see, they're in this book that I wrote back at the, uh, in, uh, in 2019, the breast cancer, breast health book. So the overconsumption of sugar and flour and other inflammatory factors causes this inner membrane of a normal mitochondria to lose its convolution. And essentially, this mitochondria inner membrane now is silenced. So what causes this transformation? You can see overeating sugar and flour and chronic inflammation. So before, just so you have a bigger idea, because it's not just sugar and flour that trash your body and, dry, and, 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 and play a role in driving cancer expression. It's all these inflammatory choices that you see on this on the screen right now. And so I'm only talking in this video about sugar and flour. So for if you want to learn more about these and kind of how to view chronic inflammation, well, you can just simply uh, watch this video that I did back in February of 2020 
uh, about how to understand chronic inflammation properly. So let's get back to the picture of the mitochondria transformation. So overeating sugar. Now remember, or if I didn't tell you yet, 40% of the average American's diet comes from sugar and flour and the refined oils that drive up inflammation and they suffer from all the other chronic inflammatory factors and that transforms a healthy mitochondria into a mitochondria that a cancer cell loves. Now, why does a cancer cell love the uh, mitochondria that looks like this? It's because this inner membrane is no longer able, this inner membrane is no longer able to make energy from fat and ketones, and this inner membrane is no longer able to generate this pore, it's called a mitochondrial permeability transition pore that's created by mitochondria to kill cancerous cells. So once you transform the mitochondria to looking like this, cancer cells can no longer be killed. That's why we want healthy mitochondria. Normal cell mitochondria, inner membrane. You can see this convoluted inner membrane that easily makes energy from fat and ketones and kills potentially cancerous cells by generating that mitochondrial permeability transition pore. Now I'll tell you what, even if you've been to med school or osteopath school, chiro school, PT school, acupuncture school, in most cases, most graduates forget what I just described right here, this mitochondrial permeability transition pore that is a key driver of apoptosis and the elimination of cancerous cells. So what happens, what does a cell look like once it's fully transformed? Because this is a slow process, right? Slow process, which is why people don't get cancer when they're in high school eating donuts. They get it when they're 30, 40, 50, or 60, depending upon their genetic disposition and how flamed up they are. So to the left, normal cell that I showed you before, cancerous cell. Now look how different, how different these cells look. First notice, please, on the cancer cell, all of these insulin receptors that are inserted into the cancer cell membrane to massively increase glucose entry into a cancer cell because cancer cells, they rely on a heavy dose of glucose to drive their energy production and their growth. So normal cell, mitochondria utilizes fats and ketones. Cancer cell can only utilize or mostly only utilizes glucose and the inner membrane that would otherwise kill this cell and also use it and, and, and also allow the cell to get energy from ketones and fatty and fat is now gone. And so this is why there is so much research on a ketogenic diet to reduce because a ketogenic diet you end up with very, very normal blood sugar levels like you can be as low as 65, which is an excellent blood glucose level. The average American, 100 or more is where they are. You want to be low with the glucose. So you go on a ketogenic diet, your fasting glucose gets down between 65 and 80, which is where one would want it. This is good for normal health anyway. And then the, the, the fats that are being consumed are not able to feed the cancer cell. So in effect, what happens is a ketogenic diet serves to functionally starve cancer cells. So if you want to prevent cancer, or if you have it, you might probably want to speak with your physician about getting your glucose way down where it should be and getting yourself on a ketogenic diet. And by the way, just so you know, if your doctor's not aware of this, there's lots of universities in America and around the world where they're looking at the ketogenic diet for, for cancer. And the reason why is because, again, to emphasize, cancer cells require high loads of glucose in order to thrive, to survive, and thrive. And so this is why we want to get our blood glucose normal and eliminate refined carbohydrates from our system. Now, it's not just refined carbohydrates that drive cancer expression. Multiple issues do. So on the back of the Deflame Diet book for breast health and cancer prevention, you can say find out why breast cancer, but you can find out why all cancers are caused by these factors. I just mentioned in this video, sugar and flour. So if you want more information about this, you can check out the Deflame Diet for Breast Health and, and Cancer Prevention single copies over at Amazon, and along with my other books. 
and volume discounts are available if you go through dflame.com. So right now you're watching the video. If you've gotten this far, you can like, subscribe, you can subscribe YouTube here, because you're here right now. And if you get over to dflame, you can then follow at Twitter and at and on Facebook, both Twitter and Facebook. Uh, I'm at dflame doc, and it's dflame nutrition.